Making a sub sandwich at home is not really even cooking, it's just assembling stuff. But why does the local deli, places like Wawa, or even grocery stores like Publix, where we have all the same ingredients, make subs or hoagies that people swear by? Well, today we're gonna cover these six key sandwich tips that we can implement at home. Internet Shack helped us out with burritos, so I thought I would pick up the baton so we can all make better deli-style subs this summer. So the two keys that I look for in a great sandwich are, firstly, it's gotta be well-seasoned but balanced flavors, and then secondly, it's gotta have a satisfying texture. You know, as I bite through this, I want the chewiness from the bread, the satiation of the meats, little freshness and crunch from the vegetables, and then the sauces kind of help lubricate and tie everything together. So we're gonna start at the top with the bread choice because all of these guidelines or tips, if you wanna call them that, kind of build on each other, and then I'll meet you back here for the taste test. Let's break it down. Without good bread, you cannot have a good sandwich. And in my opinion, for a deli style sub, the bread should be a long roll that is soft yet chewy and is sturdy enough to absorb some moisture from the sauces, vegetable, and all those meats and cheeses that we're gonna pile on there. Now, if you have a sub roll that you love from the grocery store or a bakery, by all means, that is way easier, just buy it. But for me, I do take the effort to make some. I take my standard hoagie roll recipe from the video I did a while back, and this time around I did some Italian herbs over the top before baking them. What results after baking is a beautiful bread that is ready to accept our meats and cheeses. I also did two hoagie rolls where I subbed in 20% whole wheat flour, which yields a slightly denser and chewier roll. Great subs start with great bread, but this is basically just a prerequisite. Let's get into the meat of it with number two, lubricate this sandwich well. Dry sandwiches are the worst, and to make a great deli sub, it must be lubricated appropriately. And I'm saying lubricants instead of condiments or sauces, because by lubricants, I mean anything that provides moisture to the hoagie. This could be, yes, the condiments and sauces, but also the meat choice, the fresh vegetables or pickled vegetables that you use. As far as sauces go, I think at the very least, some should be put on both the bottom and top piece of bread. And then for the meats, maybe if it's a little bit of a drier meat, you put some mustard in between the turkey and the pastrami like I did on this one. Now on the other hand, sometimes you do want to limit the moisture, so you need to be conscious of this as well. For example, vegetables like tomatoes, cucumbers, or pickles have a lot more moisture, so maybe we need to dry off that excess instead of going straight from the jar and ending up with a wet, soggy mess. A well-lubricated sandwich improves both the texture in the mouthfeel as we chew it, and then maybe even more importantly, the lubricants help transport flavor compounds, which brings us to tip number three, fat carries flavor. Very important here. As Samin Nostrat points out in her book, fats coat the tongue, allowing various aromatic compounds to stay in contact with our taste buds for longer, which intensifies and prolongs our experience of various flavors. Simply put, fat carries and intensifies flavors. And here's a little experiment for you. I made a basic submarine vinaigrette with 30 grams of olive oil, 15 grams of red wine vinegar, some dried oregano, red pepper flakes, garlic powder, a couple cranks of black pepper, and some salt. Then I made another one, except I used 30 grams of water instead of the oil. You take a piece of bread and dip it in both, and it's insane how much better the one with oil is. The fat lingers in the mouth and you can actually taste the oregano, garlic, and pepper. It enhances it instead of the one made with water, which, well, tastes watered down and diluted. Now before you get heavy handed with the mayo like some deli spots do, you don't have to go overboard. Just adding a couple drops of fat like from this vinaigrette will help amplify the sandwich. And another couple of my favorite ways to use fat on a hoagie are number one, mix mayo with aromatics, herbs, and spices. And this one was mayo, a clove of garlic, tossed in some minced basil and a bit of lime juice, and it paired perfectly well with an Italian hoagie and helps transport those flavors throughout the sandwich. Second, you can try dressing your vegetables with a vinaigrette. So instead of adding that dressing over the top, just mix it right with your onions and lettuce, which is gonna help transport and make everything cohesive, just like a dressed salad. 
Thirdly, vegetables and oil like roasted or hot peppers can be another great addition too. Now moving to tip number five is always season your vegetables. I think there's four main methods of seasoning your vegetables when it comes to sandwiches, and these are salt them, dress them, pickle them, and roast them. I hope most of us have tried a salted tomato versus an unsalted one at this point, but also adding a sprinkle of salt to some raw lettuce or onion too can have a nice effect that rounds out a sandwich. There's a reason why most deli spots ask if you want salt and pepper on your hoagie. It really works. Now, if you don't want to add plain salt to your vegetables, try placing salty chips underneath them. It's a delicious and crunchy way to make those vegetable flavors pop. Like I just mentioned, dressing them is a perfect way to bring those flavors to your taste buds. And just looking at this, I'll take a layer of this dressed lettuce and onions instead of just regular raw lettuce and onions any day. Next, you all know how I feel about pickled items. They give you the acidity, the crunch, and the freshness. And then lastly, roast them. Roasted peppers or caramelized onions are completely transformed into a savory and sweet vegetable that could be just what your sandwich needs. Whatever veggies you end up choosing for your sandwich, just think about how you are going to season them. Let's talk sandwich construction. So everyone probably has their own opinions here. So I'm gonna generalize and just say, craft your sandwich thoughtfully. As far as meats, cheeses, and vegetables, and condiments go, we pretty much have access to all the same ingredients, or in some cases, the deli meats we get at the grocery store are even better than some chains, looking at you Subway. So how we construct them should be done with some thought. My basic blueprint starting from the bottom roll is this, bread, sauce, meats, more sauce, optionally, cheese, chips, if you're adding them, vegetables, sauce, and bread. For example, giving this some thought, if we slid the tomato in the middle of the sandwich, this is sure to leave you with a slip and slide waiting to happen. Also, if you have a lot of moisture in your components, placing a fat-based sauce like mayo on both sides of the bread will help protect moisture from sogging up the bread. Additionally, think about your meat and flavor combinations. If you have five different meats, don't throw everything on one sandwich because then the flavors kind of get lost. Try to get meats or cheeses that work together. For example, to craft my Italian sub, I first placed the Italian herbs rolled down, added some of the garlic and basil lemon mayo, then my meats, which were black forest ham, salami, and pepperoni, next a couple slices of provolone, then the dressed lettuce and onion before hitting it with the salted tomatoes over the top, and finally that sauced piece of bread. These flavors work with and complement each other. Sure, you could add bacon, American cheese, and sweet pickles to this and it'll still taste good, but it kind of muddies up the flavor profile. Another one of my all-time favorite combos is turkey and pastrami. And I place down the partial whole wheat roll with plain mayo, then the pastrami, and before laying the turkey down, I put a bit of mustard on. Then I place the provolone cheese, the kettle chips, lettuce, pickled onions, and tomatoes before adding that top roll with mayo on it. It's nothing crazy, but it's just a well thought out sandwich. Now, before we devour these things, there's one last thing to do, wrap it. This may seem superfluous to do at home, but wrapping the sandwich does a really cool thing. It applies even pressure all around the sub, and the benefits of this are, one, the texture is more cohesive, two, we can add more stuff inside without it spilling out, and three, the lubricants can go to work transporting the flavors. Now obviously, you have to have built a sandwich worth wrapping using the previous tips, but I think the sandwich wrap is probably one of the biggest things that you can do to make that sub that you make at home feel special. Wrapping it evenly compresses it from all sides, which makes those ingredients get to know each other. I prefer using wax paper over parchment paper, but both work here. And for a large sub, I get out two squares to kind of create a large diamond, then place the sandwich on the overlapping point before folding in the sides and just rolling that up as tight as possible. After wrapping it, you can even let it sit for a couple minutes before slicing and enjoying. And you can just see how loose this sandwich was before wrapping. If I had tried to take a bite out of that, we were definitely going to be spilling out all over the sides compared to this tightly wrapped bundle of joy that I have now. It's time to enjoy our hoagies. All right, everybody. So I can already tell without tasting that these are the best hoagies or subs that I've ever made. Like this one just has, it's got the Italian hoagie smell that I know it's going to be good, but 
Let's taste test. Absolutely hands down best I've ever made. I mean, it's, it's so nice because you can really taste all of the different components. You get the basil and garlic mayo, you get the meats, and then you get the cheese, the vegetables, and it, everything tied together. It's not dry, it's really moist, nice and like, just, it's, it's so hard to describe. I mean, it's just, it's just really, really good. Easily the best Italian hoagie I've ever made. But now we're gonna move to this one, which is another one of my favorite combos, is the turkey and pastrami. It's another winner, you know, you get the meats in there and then this one's really nice because of that layer of mustard that we added in between the meats. You get that in the middle there, which is really nice. And then we kept this one pretty simple with the lettuce, tomato, a little bit of pickled onions, some chips on there. I mean, I think sometimes just the simpler the better. Don't try to overdo it with tons and tons of toppings. Stick to like a couple of key things to so get those flavors that come through. But that's gonna wrap it up for me in this one, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed. If you make a sandwich with any of these tips, would love to see. Send it to me on Instagram. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.